Another day, another video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are watching Peaky Blinders. This episode two, season four. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys may enjoy the series so far. Last episode was crazy, mate. I can't believe the ending. So it looks like John and Michael are potentially dead, mate. The Italians, you know, the Chen Gretas, they retaliated. Obviously, last season we seen the the Shelby's take out the dad. Obviously, in retaliation to Grace being killed, and obviously they sent the Black Hand. They sent a card marking everybody for death, pretty much. Uh, in the last episode, and we ended it with Tommy having a scrap in his own house. You know, one of the chefs, his right hand men, he is uh, one of the guys implemented to take Tommy out. He figured it out himself, Tommy, and he's gone down and took action and killed him before, obviously, he could get the attack on Tommy. Now, John didn't manage to do that in time. They pulled up outside of his house, jumped out of a haystack, all got Tommy guns, boom, 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 mowed him down and mowed, obviously, Michael down. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if they've died or if they're in a bad, bad way. Well, they've got to be in a bad way. You know, there's no questions about it. They've been shot multiple times. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how the Shelby's react, how Esme's going to react to, obviously, John being shot right outside of uh, the house, right in front of her as well. You know, uh, are they going to come all the way in and try and take out the women? We did get told that they're not bothered about taking out males, females or children Do you know what I mean? Are they going to send an even worse message? Who knows? You know, we said, uh, well, Tommy was saying that pretty much Esme, she's pretty much would have been marked as well. They're going to be, uh, not Esme, sorry, uh, Ada. She's going to be um, coming after her as well. Pretty much anybody associated with the Shelbys. We've seen uh, the, all of them get a card. And now Arthur, he's obviously, well, he's trying to live a quiet life, isn't he? He's got a farm that'll go in. He's got his wife, Linda. She's not happy with, obviously, who's ringing and uh, Ada turning up. But he's going to have to come. He, you know, Tommy said to her, look, mate, if he, she doesn't want to come, then you're going to have to pull a gun on her. We need to have this family meeting. Something is going down, and it's going down today, Christmas Day, and that's what did actually happen. They went and took, obviously, John out. So I can't wait to see, obviously, the rest of today's episode. Obviously, I want to know how the Shelbys are going to react to the attack and what they're going to do to retaliate. Um, and it's going to be a crazy wild season if we're going to finish the way we started. It's going to be amazing. And I like how Savita's has been dropped back into it, you know, after we've seen him in season two. So, fantastic stuff can't wait for today's video if you do enjoy it please smash the like it really helps out subscribe if you're new and as always let's jump into episode two of season four of peaky blinders <laughs> John might have died. Oh, it looks like he has. Oh, John does look in a bad way, mate. He didn't look like he was breathing. I thought he looks like he might be dead. Is it him? Yeah. Wow. On his own doorstep. His own fucking doorstep. Okay, John. I don't think we're going to Come on, look at him. Come here, brother. You've spoken to him. That's motto. No peace for either of you. Ever. No, oh, mate, I cannot believe that we actually doubled down on a John death. You know, I was saying last episode that the, you know, like retaliating against a big family member is the way to go. It gets everybody crazy. You know, there's nothing more than a vengeful family. And now John's dead, mate. I didn't expect John at all. Madness, honestly. I'm going to miss him, to be honest. I think I liked his character. He was quite funny and I liked just the way he was, his mannerisms and, uh, and everything. So... Big shoes to fill, whoever's coming in for it. I'm hoping Esme steps up, me actually, and takes his role in the business and like becomes crazy this season and wants to avenge him. That's my choice, but we'll see how it goes. Madness. Taking the children on the road to live with decent people. You'll never know the curse side of this family. Tommy, they're gathered. John is dead. Michael is badly wounded. They say it's 60, 40 in his favor. Yeah, number, there's no percentages. Michael and John were shot because we killed someone. Chante Changreta. His son Luca has come to take revenge. And the time comes, and it will come. He 
is the oldest brother who put this bullet into his fucking head. These men are professionals. They're good at what they do, so we're gonna need more than we have. We sent a message to have our armor gold. I'll get you 50 Levi's. Good men, Tom. I don't need good men, Johnny. For this, I need bad men. Tommy, his people are fucking savages. Yeah, the truth is, the police are busy with the revolution. Moss says they're expecting strikes and riots when the weather gets warm and the Bolsheviks plan to... The stroke. Bolsheviks couldn't plan a fucking picnic. He's reading the wrong papers. Real or not real, the coppers don't give a fuck about us. We have to agree to end this war between us. Little bastard. I'm sending us fucking kids, Sergeant Ryder. Do men's work. My son's not here to speak. So I'll speak on behalf of us both. Truce. Far for peace, two for truce, and abstention. Let's get on with the war. Blues and Villa goalkeeper. Dan Tremlin plays in goal for the Blues, and Tommy Jackson for the Villa. <laughs> you got covers to Charlie's done! We'll like to sit in ducks here if the wops come. Yeah, well, Tommy said we should do it in the open. That background looks really good. This is how John wanted to go. The truth is, we died together once before. Now bullets left, waiting for the Prussian cavalry to come and to finish us off. And Jeremiah said we should sing in the bleak midwinter. But we were spared, and we all agreed that everything after that was extra. To be fair, Tommy's built a massive, absolute empire. They're all like millionaires, they've all got sick lives. Yeah, they have to look over the shoulder because they are obviously in a criminal kind of empire, but it's not as if that he hasn't took his second chance and been successful. Mate, the Shelbys have been really successful. Um, and I can see that, um, what is it now, Polly, mate? I bet she gets on Tommy's nerves this season. I can see it already. She's countering everything that she's saying. She's been well negative. That's where he's from Game of Thrones, little finger. Put it out in the open on purpose. She used John's funeral fire as a fucking beacon. We were never in any danger, Polly. You set a trap. Finn, Finn, go to the yard and light the fires. That's the language of vendetta. I take one of ours, we take two of theirs. I'm not staying for this, Arthur. I'm going home. Oh, yeah? Arms 57, Watery Lane. <laughs> She's going home, home to the other guy. Key to number 57. I'm going home to the country. You will stay here until it's over. Take the fucking key, Linda. Look, away from here, you are a weakness to all of us. They will take you hostage. 500 each, 1,000 for the brace. Where do you want them? Charlie, take them to the yard. See, right, I understand that Polly's fuming that they used his John's like, funeral, obviously, to make a statement, but again, like, I'm also going to counter it and say I don't understand why she's that concerned the people that took john out are being dealt with two of them you know have just been killed themselves might not be part of the exact organization but they're making a stance and do you know what i mean nothing really was affected they had the funeral john went off the way he wanted to you know get burned all these medals all these gear do you know what i mean and like yes okay the people come but they retaliated they made a statement you take one of ours you take two of yours so I can see where Polly's coming from, but I I'm kind of on Tommy's side there. I don't see the big deal. Not too far, not too deep, Curly. I need a message to get through. Good guards, they are. On your feet. Hello, Mum. Dr. Seth is saying you look like a football. What else did he say? He said you took four bullets. Where's Tommy? Oh, don't worry about it. Tommy, just get better. Where is he? Made a decision. Give me a cigarette, Mum. It's not loud. Not so loud. <laughs> no, America's no good because that's where they are. But there's no Italians in Australia. I don't think there are, Mum. Bad ones, I mean. <laughs> Stop taking those prison tablets. Why don't you worry about me? Yeah, I do. That's how the factories come back to work. Just forget the fucking factories. Is there any word of them going out on strike? When we go to Australia, it'll just be you, me, and your sister. Because I found out where she was buried. Somewhere outside Melbourne. Listen, Mum. Without you, he falls apart, and without him, without him, they'll take us all. Fire for melting silver, canal to get it away. How much? Nothing you see here is for sale, Mr. Gold. 
Oh, everything is for sale. Everything. This yard has been in his family since they settled. But I've decided to make it part of our deal. I'm gonna spin a coin for your yard, Charlie. Coin for what? If it's heads, Abby here takes all of this. And if it's tails, I fuck your daughter, Mr. Gold. Yeah. Toss the coin, Mr. Gold. You toss that coin, you take a bet before witnesses. Toss the coin, Mr. Gold. He's not gonna do it. What he's showing is that they're not here to be messed around with. When the time comes. And before that time, please don't again disrespect my friends or the value property. That was good, actually, because he's coming in. He's trying to kind of like stamp an authority, show that he's the big man. Tommy's having none of it. He's counted it. And, you know, show that we're not to mess around with. You may think you're big. We're big as well. Do you know what I mean? We're not a pushover. We might have got you in, but we're still calling the shots. You know what I mean? I like it. Um... The toss of a coin, you know what I mean? It's interesting. I like how he said that he's going to use that to buy a flower to put in his grave. Maybe insinuating that after they're done with the Italians, he might come after him. Who knows? You know, maybe we set him up for the final few seasons. But it's exciting. The light type is intimidating. And he's a good actor, him. He actually is a good actor. They've introduced some decent ones in this season. Well, this show in general. Tommy does need a dinner. How many of your factories are in the safe territories? 70%. Shelby Company Limited will continue to manufacture. Lizzie says it's only whores these days. Have them smuggled in, I suppose. <laughs> I need you back, Polly. Paying whores for sex. No, our mother went this way. Spirits and ghosts, tablets, fucking, fucking seances. It's getting us kids halfway to fucking death. I was dead in that noose. And then I was saved. So everything from now on is extra. But what <laughs> That's I pretty good. Until today, get your whores vetted by Lizzie. They'll use your weakness. Don't take any new men on in the factories unless you know their families. He wants something other than just money. He needs an advisor, that's what he does, a trusted one. He's a fine beast, this one. Nothing you see is for sale, Mr. Shelby. What is it that you want from me, Mr. Gold? How do you know I want anything from you? As my company treasurer, as a certified accountant, and also apparently a witch. And a gambling man. What I want from you, Mr. Shelby, is for you to take a gamble on him. I want you to help my son achieve his ambition. He wants to become a boxer. Is that it? Is that all he wants? You know what I mean? Get Arthur to train him. He's ruthless fighter, isn't he? I'm looking for Tommy. Intelligence Service in London have sent seven officers up to Birmingham to take over the investigation into the communists and seditionists. Ada Shelby's now firmly back in place in the family business. Thing is. You're gonna mark against you now, it's very hard to shift it. I don't know if she'll pass a message on me. She seems like the person that wouldn't, do you know what I mean? Bloody hell, I've not seen her since season two, is Hello, it? Hello, Curly. I'm here to collect Mr. Shelby's horse. I'm a little early, I think. Well, now he's got the Americans after him. He's a bit hard on people. The Americans? Yeah, they called him the Mafia. Yeah, there's 15 of them. <laughs> yeah, they want to kill us all. <laughs> but we've got guns and grenades and, and pillars back, so I'm going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's face here, this car back, and we're on the feet of rope and a bell. What, run? Yep, and a bell. What, Mr. Shelby, this place is about to explode. A rope and a bell, Devlin. Someone here wants to fight you. Bonnie Gold, come here, son. I'm an heavyweight. He's a welterweight at best. Nevertheless, he wants to fight you. Yeah, when I damage him, the blinders will take my eyes. Now come back, Billy. It's just a fight, Queensbury rule. The boy knows you can hit back, Rog. Told him in the professional game people want their money's worth. Fuck oh, me. How many fights? 25, bare knuckle, all knockouts. Five with gloves in pastures, all knockouts. Against? Romany fighters. That's why they won't let us in the fairs no more. He keeps winning. I could fight a fucking tree and knock it out, Mr. Shelby. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, mate? If you're going to, like, state your claim to, to be a good and big man, you know, nothing better to do it. He was saying there, this guy's a former, like, champ of, I don't know, a couple of belts or whatever, weight classes. Mate, the guy, he, he, he's well heavier than him, like, at least two weight classes above. So he, the fact that he's just knocked him out with ease, it's really impressive. Maybe Tommy ventures into another... Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe because of the Shelby money, they can invest into this lad, and maybe that's what he gets out of it, you know? Like, nothing better than a father seeing his son succeed and following his dreams, isn't it? So maybe that's what he wants. 
I'd probably give him give him a goal, me. Invest it, give him a couple of fights, see how it goes. The guy says he's 25 and 0 in bare knuckle fighting, and he's uh, you know, a knockout a tree if he has to. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd give him a go anyway. It was a good uh, introduction, that. Mr. Shelby's on his way. Fight in the workshop. No. No, just a bit of sport. Sport between men, Mrs. Eden. Actually, I'm Miss Eden. Be patient. A good man will come. Oh, we got a lot going on now, so. Yeah. So it'd be good to have the kid around. We take the That's fucking true. kid on. One day, man, I'm fucking taking a bullet for you. Can't afford to lose another brother. Get on. Right, we'll do it. Oh, we need to do a deal about money. So when will my first real fight be, do you think, Mr. Shelby? Well, as soon as we can find anyone stupid enough to get in the ring with you. <laughs> Come on, shit. Thank you. Can't ask for much more than that, though, can you? Do you know what I mean? I accept it in. Got a big payout. What you're doing here is robbery. You're in manners free to leave. You cut five shillings from the weekly wage. And you said if I did that, you'd bring every man and woman in all my factories out on strike. You believe because coal is expensive and it's been a cold winter, and because wages have been cut over the past 12 months, you think because of all that, nobody will walk out on strike. You know, Mr. Shelby, it's almost as if you want trouble. <sighs> Just blow your fucking so it's interesting Tommy's conversations with her, honestly. He's like antagonised that he wants it to happen, kind of. Who's next? He's a, a delegate from the European Council for Trade. He's here to talk about the import of car parts to France. Mr. Shelby? Oh. This is Monsieur Paz. You just came from Paris, eh? In old Paris. I left Paris in a cattle truck. I came here from Paris. That does not mean I'm French. That's where I'm from. He didn't come on a train. He suit his press, your shoes are clean. Sure, that is not armed. And that she, Italian. I heard you dress well, Mr. Shelby. But now I see, not so well as me. I am surprised how easy it was to get into a room with you. I sent an accomplice into your office, an overalls. Found your gun. Hard to show me. Bonnie Gray. You gotta have some balls to do this, aren't you? Michael Gray. John Shelby. Hey, that thorn on Tommy Shelby. I could have killed you when I walked through the door. I want you to be alive. After your entire family is dead. Instead of sending you a black hand, I could have had you killed in the night. And I don't know why. But I want you to know. No civilians, no children, no police. Welcome to Birmingham. It's my time, mate. That's really good. So intimidating, honestly. That was a sick conversation. That bullet flick as well. Perfect. Where's John, do you think, Tom? Fuck knows. Oh, he's gone, though. Like a hole behind your head. But it's like with Grace. They're just gone. Ah, oh, interesting. Do you know what? It's true. People, like, it's ruthless, but, like, when people die, they're just gone, aren't they? Like, literally, just gone. Here one minute, gone the next, and all you've got is the memories of what you had with them. And it's deep and it's ruthless, but it's true. And, um, you know, all they could do now is try and avenge him. Now, I absolutely love what that guy just said. You know, he's come in, he's sat at the table, and he's got the bullets down, and he was being really intimidating. And then, um, you know, he was he was like one for obviously Tom Air, one for Ada, one for uh, John. You know, he spent one for Arthur, and you know, one for Polly, one for Michael. Like, he wants all of them killed. But what he's saying is, look, mate, I didn't have to come here and sit down. You know, I could have walked in that door and shot you. I didn't have to send you the letters telling you that I'm coming after you. Could have killed you in your sleep. You know, you could have been left all this time wondering who's killed me, what's going on, why is my family being attacked. But we do this with honour. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to come here. I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it. And you're going to know the reason why you're being attacked. And, uh, you know, I actually really liked that. And I liked how when everybody was obviously uh, working or, like, engaged in the boxing match that was going on downstairs, you know, somebody managed to sneak upstairs and managed to take the bullets out of Tommy's gun. That's really good. And it shows that he can get people into places. Now, obviously, like, common sense, you would probably think that the person on home soil, home ground, would be uh, the person with the advantage, you know. Like, you would say they'd know all these places, they'd have more people, and obviously they, they better ways of defending themselves. 
that's what common sense would say. But like, if you think about it, they, the Shelbys, have no idea who the Italians are. So, like, I understand that the Shelbys could have 100 people on their side, but the Italians might only need 10. And the 10, nobody knows. So, like, at least, obviously, the Italians, the Cinquetas, they obviously know who the Shelbys are and they know the targets that they want to do. You know, they want to take out and they know people of, like, place of work and associations and they can obviously follow and tell them and, and get to them that way. Where Tommy, I had no idea. He had no idea he was a Chen Greta, do you know what I mean? Uh, when he walked in the room, obviously, like, when he started speaking, he figured it out. But it just shows, you know, he could be anywhere and anyone at any time could come in and they could do you. So I understand that, obviously, the Italians have got less people, but they've probably got the advantage because they're the unknown. You never know when they strike and you never know where to find them. So I do love that conversation that he's just had that, you know, he said that I could have killed you at any time in any place. You know what I mean? When you're sleeping with the car, they didn't have to send it. But we're here and I'm an honourable man. And I'm from me to you, you're going to be the last one to be killed. You know, we could take you out right now. But no, we're going to take out all your family. We're going to let you suffer. And then we're going to take you out. Now, obviously, watching films and TV shows, we know it's a bad thing. It's like when you tie somebody up, a villain. Uh, or, and you're like, when like the Joker gets a Batman and he ties him up. And he's like, he could easily kill him. But all he does, he starts laughing. He starts like torturing him a little bit. And then he escapes. And then he comes back and he gets him. Do you know what I mean? Like, when you, when you catch somebody, you take them out then. You don't give them a second chance. Like, but he wants to do it honourably. He said that would do it. No kids. They say no wives. He might not have said that, actually. Um, but he definitely said no kids and no police. And they kind of, like, chucked hands on it and went forward. So, I wonder who's going to die for it. I mean, somebody from the Shelbys. We can't just have John dying, even though that's shocking. I feel like one more or two more. Whether it's a sporadic character. You know, whether it's the ones in the docks that didn't want to sell, you know, his his yard. Or whether it's uh, one of the Lees. Or, you know, whether it's Arthur's wife. Or, or, or you know, just to absolutely finish off um, John's family. Do you know what I mean? Take out Esme. Who knows? But I feel like maybe two more small, even small part characters like Curly. I don't know. Would need to go from the Shelby side like the Peaky Blinders. Just to have an impact. And know that there's no messing about. Okay, and that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks so much for checking out the channel today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So, we have absolutely confirmed that John is dead. You know, Michael survived. Polly's gone to see him in the hospital. You know, she wanted to move to Australia. He's saying, no, you know what? We need to get through this family business. Tommy needs you. You know, you're his strength. You need to be by his side. Without you, the business, the Shelbys, the, the Peaky Blinders, they'll crumble. He needs his advisor. And um, do you know what? If you want to move to Australia, let's get past all this business first let's get past the italians and then if you still want to go i'll happily come with you so obviously polly's come she's sat down she's give tommy some advice and you know she's already back in business now in terms of like i said uh john r.i.p son you know you've had a good ride i didn't expect you to die but um there's nothing more like i've been saying uh in since the start of the season than a, a family death that's going to spur you on and give you more courage and, and more desire and then um, you know more motivation to defeat the enemy so it's going to be interesting to see how obviously Arthur and Tommy react moving forward I just absolutely loved like I said that meeting that's just happened with Tommy just showing that you know we can get into a room with him you know he's got people all over the place they don't know who it is and then um, you know just friend him lift the bullets out and said one for each family member now, I also think it's interesting, uh, I'm not too sure what his name is, but Littlefinger, you know, he's in the show now. Um, he helped uh, Tommy, well, you know, John had his funeral and uh, two of the Italians come to take them out and he's come and he's killed them, brought them over, used them as a message. And then obviously he's um, he tries to buy the shipyard. Uh, Tommy's obviously like shown that he's got, not a bit of power, but shown that he's not a pushover. He's like, look, mate, you know, we'll flip a coin then. If you want it, you have it. But if you lose, I'm sleeping with your eldest daughter. Do you know what I mean? Your choice. You know, if you decide to flip it, we honour it, mate. It's sacred. So the guy didn't actually do it. Tommy's gone to actually speak to him and say, look, mate, what do you actually want? Polly spoken to him. She said that she gets like this feeling. She can see the auras around him. He wants more than money in the shipments. You know, ask him. He's told him he wants his son to box. They've set up a match against a heavyweight. You know, his son's definitely not that. And um, he's actually won. Looked like he was a, a decent fighter. Tommy's uh, backed him. He said that he's part of the Peaky Blinders now. Give him a cut of the gate. He said that he's going to get him training with the Lees possibly. And then they're going to use it like Alfie does. He said that it's easy money. They can fix fights. They can move up. They can go to America, New York, you know, sell out. And, um, you know, 
why not start here? He looks like a, a decent guy. So I, I think that was good. We've also got this woman about the revolution. Do you know what I mean? She's coming in. She's talking about equal pay and stuff again. Tommy's like, look, if you want to blow your whistle, just blow your whistle, man. Literally, I don't care. And she's got out. She's done that. It looks like they've gone on strike. Now, I think it's interesting that the police officer's come, he's knocked on the house, you know, speaking to Arthur's wife, saying that, look, mate, you know, people are coming up from London, seven officers or something, they're looking into this revolution. Ada's on the top of the charts, you know what I mean? Like, pretty much, as soon as you get a strike next to your name, it is so hard to get them to stop looking after you. Now, I said the way her personality is, I'm not too sure that she would relay that information. It's going to be interesting to find out, you know. Um, Ada's not actually leading the revolution, but she is part and back into the family business. So I wonder what they uncover or what, you know, like how, how much they actually uh, follow her. I think the Italians, I think the scenes are actually really good, actually. I would actually uh, like Tom to team up with Alpha. And if the Sabine is going to be part of this as well, you know, do you know what I mean? So she got the Chingretas and Sabine. I would like the, the, the obviously the Peaky Blinders to join up with Alpha, you know, the Jewish in London. And then they count as well. It's like 2v2. Sick actors all around then. They're all intimidating, all going to be crazy. I'm expecting lots of fights and lots of deaths. And I can't wait to watch the next episode. So thanks for checking out the channel today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please smash the like. It really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.